Well, gentlemen, welcome to the Forge and Fire Gambling House. Now here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna spin the wheel of forging, which is gonna give you a technique you need to use for round one. Now there's some that are pretty easy, like choose your own technique. Now we've got things as hard as jelly roll Damascus. Chris, you're up next, come on up. Let's see what you get. In round one, 200 layer Damascus. Are you happy with that choice? I'm very happy. All right, Damon, test your luck. In round one, oh, extremely close to Jelly Roll, but you landed on 100 layer Damascus. I'll take it. You happy with it? Yes, sir. All right, bud. 100 layer Damascus is cakewalk. <laughs> Johnny, you are up. And think about taking what were the first challenges that I know how to do. In round one, we are on Raindrop Damascus. You feeling comfortable with that? You bet. Good luck. Your time starts now. I stack all 24 pieces together to start with. With 24 layers, my billet is going to be cut into five pieces to make a 120 layer. Then I'm going to have to cut that in half and re-weld that. That will give me a 240 layer billet. I have to make raindrop Damascus. A full tank chopper is what I have in mind. I only chose 10 pieces of steel to begin with because if part of this billet would screw up, then I would have extra to fall back on. Starting out with 24 layers, and I need to get to over 100. So I'm going to draw out the 24 layers, stack it in three, which will give me 72 layers, and then stack it again in two, and I get 144. I've made 100 layer Damascus a lot, but it can be a little bit tricky. I need to make sure that it's welded up real well. My steel's moving pretty well. Draw it out to at least 12, 14 inches so I can uh, cut it into thirds. I have three 24 layer pieces. I need to get them cleaned up so I can restack them and then stick them back in the forge and forge weld them again. Damon seems to be the only one that before he restacks, takes the time to really clean out his metal each and every time. Damon's working smart. Setting that first weld is critical, and I have to do that several times. Look at Chris's billet. Like the bottom third of the stack is, is a different color than the rest of the stack. Still cold in the center. If these welds don't set, I am done. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, boy. Oh, come that on. I'm freaking out right now. But I realize two thirds of it are a nice solid billet. I'm just gonna get rid of the top piece and keep moving. There you go, good. Take it, get it out of there. It's gonna require more cuts and more forge welds to make 200 layers, but it's easier than starting from scratch. So Chris took his stack of 17, cut it into seven pieces, welding it together, and then he's gonna end up with 119 layers. Good. And he'll just need one more cut and stack. Now that the, the billet's all put together, I have to get to the drill press and do the raindrops. What makes a raindrop pattern is to have multiple layers. Once you've forced that down into a bar, you drill through that steel and then forge that all down. So all the layers in that hole that you've made now come to the surface. It's not easy putting the uh, raindrops into the Damascus steel because of the, the hardness of the steel. So I make the decision just to put a, a couple in on both sides to try to get a staggered formation so I can move on to the next step in the process. Time to start thinking about the quench. If I get a warp blade, it's so thick, it's going to be hard to get it out. All right, Damon's in the quench. Had just a slight little warp to it, so I put some weight on top of it and look, have it. It ended up straight. All right, Chris is quenched as well. I pull it out, and it's pretty darn straight. I am very relieved. I don't have time to thermal cycle the blade. Johnny quenched his blade. Hopefully nothing opened up or popped loose. I got a slight warp. You have a short window of opportunity after the quench to thread it out. Well, now I have to refine the profile of the blade. Five, four, three, two, one. Placement, turn off your machines, put down your tools. Round one is over. All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test, the roulette wheel chop. 
Now I'm gonna be taking your blades, all of them have a Damascus construction, and mash them into this roulette wheel. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to the roulette wheel, it's what that roulette wheel does to your blades. Chris, you're up first, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Chris, right off, your blade held up perfectly. There's absolutely nothing wrong with your handle construction, but it would have been nice if it was scaled up just a little bit, because there's not a lot of meat there. Good job. Thank you very much. Damon, you ready? Yes, sir, give it hell. All right, so, Damon, this blade is easy to hold on to. The flare that that antler gives makes perfect retention. You've got a really nice grind on this. It's still sharp. You took one little ding right there. Other than that, there's no damage to the blade at all. Nice and done. Thank you. Johnny, your turn. You ready? Be lying if I said yes. All right, Johnny, gonna start with the blade. It is sharp. It didn't take any damage. Your handle, this curve at the back on a blade this heavy, my hand tends to want to slide down on that. You did pick up a little piece of wood right there in that delamination, but nothing came apart. Held up great in the strength test. Good Thanks. job. All right, Blade Spitz, we know your blades are strong, but are they sharp? This is the playing card slice, the sharpness test. For this particular test, it's all about your edge. Are we all in? Yes, sir. All, all right. right, Chris, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. <laughs> all right, Chris, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, your edge here cut all the cards through. Nothing was crushed. Overall, sir, your weapon, you'll cut. Thank you. All right, Damon, are you ready to play cards with the beast? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. All right, Damon, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, I like the look of your blade. It's very intimidating. I also like that you can see all these layers of Damascus. Overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. Thank you. All right, Johnny, your turn, sir, you ready? Dave said it was sharp, prove him wrong. All right, let's see. I took a gamble on my edge geometry. If you don't have the right angle on your edge, the cards are gonna tear and rip. If my blade doesn't cut through the cards, I will be going home. All right, Johnny, let's talk about your blade here, your edge. You really took a gamble on the kind of grind that you chose for this. It was great for the strength test, but when you're cutting through cards like this, you need a finer edge. So that kind of cut basically pushed some cards aside, and some of the cards that it did cut, it's more of a shred rather than a clean cut. So overall, sir, your weapon, you'll kind of cut. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, this is a high-stakes competition, and you all turned in blades that tested well in their own way. But as you know, only two of you can move forward in this competition, which means one of you is going home. The judges have made the decision, and the bladesmith leaving the forge is... Johnny. Unfortunately, your blade just didn't make the cut, and Jay's going to tell you why. Johnny, you worked really hard, and we appreciate that. There's some issues with your handle. And that Scandi bushcraft grind on the chopper really didn't help you in the sharpness test. That's why we're letting you go. I understand. Well, Johnny, you made a blade that smashed through the strength test, but the cards don't lie. Unfortunately, you're not going to be moving forward in this competition. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you very much. for. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Good, Good luck, guys. Good fight, Johnny. Thanks, buddy. This was a tough competition. It's not as easy as it looks. 
I'm not making no excuses, there are none. It's just uh, luck of the draw.